Hello, and welcome to a new Drawed LP. Apparently, I talk about lemmings a lot while I'm doing things, so I figured, you know, I should probably have an LP of a lemming hold. This is going to be Rodents of Unusual Size by Red13. Uh, be honest, aren't those uh, R-O-U-S's the cutest, uh, cutest thing you've ever seen? They are pretty cute, and I am a huge fan of them. So this is an 8 brain hold. I'm expecting to be here for a while, but at the same time, they're lemmings. How bad could this be, really? Uh, is this... okay, this looks like a tutorial room that's just going to introduce us to all of the different lemmings, and then we're actually going to get into the, the puzzles proper in the next room, I guess. Uh, thanks to Larry Merck, Insoluble, Kamachi, Leos, Blurks1, Chaco, and Disoriented for testing the hold. Thanks a lot to Nuntar, Blorks1, and Karen Miller for helping me with challenge scripting. Thanks again for Nuntar with helping me with lemming description. I guess that's going to be this room. For those who don't know, let me quote the whole description again. I do not own these bonus elements, and I did not script them. They are elements from the Second Sky, which I particularly enjoyed. All credits go to Caravel Team. Yes. And in fact, if you purchase, uh, I think the, these elements, they're not... Like, they don't come bundled with the editor. You, you get the editor for free without buying the game. Uh, from what I understand, actually. I, I, I have to put that caveat, because I've never actually had a non-purchased version of Drawd, but my understanding is that with a demo version of the game, you have full access to the editor. The only thing that you're missing is some room styles and music. But in this case, this custom element came packaged with the Second Sky, uh, which is, you know, Drawd 5.0's official hold. Oh, that's, that's suspicious. Um, yeah, so this came, they came packaged uh, with the Second Sky. And you get permission with the with a purchase of that game to use any of the custom elements within that game within your own holds. So I believe if you wanted to use Lemmings, technically you would have to own a copy of the Second Sky. Uh, but uh, that's something that I do um, definitely have, and I've actually enjoyed working with these. I've made a few puzzles with them myself. Uh, let's get into it. So here's a brief explanation. There we go. Of all types of lemmings, for those who don't own TSS at the Second Sky, or haven't arrived at their level yet, all of them need to be killed to drop the green door. Yes, uh, even uh, these ones, I didn't know this for a long time, I thought these were special. Uh, we'll get into why when we get to, we'll get into why when we get to them. Uh, all of them need to be killed to drop the green door. Uh, all of them move after regular monsters. Okay, that's just a matter of, I guess, keeping the default scripting order. Are these on, like, sequence 9999 then, as opposed to... Uh, regular monster turn order because you can have them act like regular monsters if you want to it's a very easy fix to make in the edit ed in the editor but maybe they didn't do that in the the base game uh, okay you know what i said this is suspicious but now that i look at this like what would i ever do with it i could get to this island but it doesn't benefit me to get to the island i don't think lemmings okay so these are your, your basic default lemmings here they can only move straight ahead and will chomp through some stuff, but they will push other other things. Yeah. So these are... Also, I guess I have to time this. Yeah, probably. So if I just let them go at any time... Yeah, so this is why I don't think this is going to be all that bad. I mean, I know there's really complicated stuff you can do with Lemmings, but... He's just moving a straight line. How hard could this be? So you are going to bite the bomb and blow up. You're going to push the mirror, and then you're going to get stuck, because you can't eat mirrors, so you'll get stuck on the hot tile and die. You will chew through the orb, and then get stabbed by the floor spikes, except that the timing is going to be off, which is why you hit the checkpoint first. So you're going to end up here. Now let's just confirm. Goodbye. Uh, also worth noting that they actually activate the orbs, and they will activate non-cracked orbs as well. And I was off by, I guess, three turns. So let's wait seven. What am I doing? They move on the turn that I step on this. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Wait three, wait three turns, that's what it was, okay. There we go. 
uh, bent tail lemmings. They will move in the direction they are facing until they find a wall or obstacle they can't move. Then they'll turn clockwise by 90 degrees. And I guess this is just showing off that they have a diagonal as well. Uh, I might actually have to time this better because you're going to die on those four spikes. Yeah. Didn't want that to happen. Okay. Uh, the one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're gonna die again. I guess you're because it takes you eight eight turns to get around. So we're just gonna wait. And if I do that, uh, and it is also worth uh, worth pointing out, these things they turn twice. They turn twice. So the fact that there is a clear open spot here does not mean it'll start moving diagonally. Because it starts orthogonally, it'll keep going orthogonally. This one will keep going diagonally. Was that enough time? No, it wasn't. Okay, I had the wrong time. So how do I... I guess I need to be here then. So not going up. So if I let you through here at this time... It's, it, I don't feel good about it. Here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, it'll be close. Maybe that'll work. I don't think so, actually. No. Okay. Uh, that was the one I just did. So that. Yeah, okay. That'll get you off. And yeah, and you eat the powder keg. You died on the hot tile, of course, because it takes you two turns to rotate. Lemmings cannot survive uh, on hot tiles. I mean, they can they can walk across them, but the bent tail ones will never be able to turn on a hot tile, just like you. Blue lemmings, or mimic lemmings, as the thing will say. You can probably guess how that works. We'll move in the same direction as you move but they will stay put if their diagonal is blocked. Right, so they're kind of like Mimics, but they don't have the, the sliding on obstacles. So if I moved, well, I can demonstrate this pretty easily. Like here, um, if I move diagonally up to the right, uh, the Lemming did not move. So let's just get down here so that we have enough. Is that enough room? One, two, over. Yeah, that looks like enough. And then I need to go all the way over here. This is going to open the door. And I need this lemming to die. Uh, I could have done it by getting it on the hot tiles as well. So the reason I didn't know about these things having to die is because I always thought they were friendly. Uh, and that... And in the second sky, every room that contains them, which is like, what, one room each or maybe two rooms each? Not a lot. Yeah, two rooms each, I think. Uh, they just automatically die in the course of solving the room. So, because you, you have to sacrifice them to kill water skippers or roaches or whatever. So because of that, I didn't realize these were actually required enemies. Baby lemmings. They will move in the direction the player is facing. All right, so it's like a Fagundo. And yeah, it'll eat the orb. That's fine. And I need to make use of these Ormites for an old trick here. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Let's look at that. I didn't know this. So I step onto the Ormites, and, I'm st and I retain my facing. I don't turn in the direction... Alright, because I had a weapon when I made that step. Uh, I probably knew that, or would have reasoned that out if I had, had cause to do that before this, but that's, that's an interesting Ormite interaction I hadn't considered. Uh, but anyway, we need... Because we can step off and reorient immediately. And that's how we can get around the hot tile. Step on that, open this. Uh, additional notes. All lemmings are scripted characters, so they have abilities that normal monsters don't possess. Some puzzles are based on these abilities. Also, another uh, thing I guess I should mention just for the sake of completion here. Um, well, there, there are things I'm not mentioning, probably, but 
something else that comes to mind is that if you put lemmings in a room, the room will not work unless you have a regular monster somewhere in the room. So if you only have scripted enemies in your room, you will not, uh, you will not have, uh, they will just not appear. The room will be cleared by default. So this room probably has a spider here or in the water somewhere, or maybe on this island. There's probably a spider somewhere in this room that is killed with scripting on turn zero so that the room registers as a room that contains monsters. Then the spider's killed so that, adults, so that it doesn't exist in the room. But because the room was already registered as having monsters, the lemming script kicks in and the lemmings appear. And that was horribly inefficient, the way I did that. And okay, no backtracking. I guess it's a little bit late to check for secrets. Uh, this is beach style, which I seem to recall has pretty easy secrets to find. But then again, I had a lot of trouble finding the ones on... Uh, oh, there we go. Careful nets being slow today. Uh, I do recall in the second sky, there was also a beach level for the lemmings, and some of those secrets there were really hard to spot the way that they did them. Uh, but yeah, so the, they are a scripted enemy, but because there are no enemies in this room, they do not appear. So that's why, again, you had to place a spider or something. Usually spiders are used because they won't show up as easily. Uh, interesting. Oh, I can't get in there, but I can get out. So maybe this is used to get to here. So it's going to be like some big massive secret chain, I guess. Uh, oh. I see, interesting. Uh, is this... Can this room only be completed from this section then? Because I need to be able to leave, I can't leave the room to the south. I wonder if I can leave that way. Uh, I, I don't even know that I need to drop this trapdoor. I'm just kind of looking at some things here. All right, so what do we got here? We have a lemming that's stuck. You have two mirrors, so it's not gonna be able to push. Okay, but we've got a line here. This is going to be a little bit tricky because if I push that, the lemming's just going to eat me. I can push this one. Oh wait, I think maybe? Really? Oh right, because it's two. Yeah, of course. So that's a problem, because then you just get to there. And at no point do I have the ability to kill you. Okay, so... Get the the Mimic out. So how do I get in? I, I take the tunnel, okay. So do I not want to blow this up for some reason? Uh, I want to hit that. I guess I want to hit that with the Mimic and get the powder keg out. Because... Hmm. I mean, the powder keg would be the easiest way to kill this, is if I had the powder keg. Uh, if I had the lemming mimic... Actually, I need the powder keg. I was thinking if I had the lemming mimic, I could push the mirror out of the way and get rid of the mirrors that way, but I'm still never going to be able to reach this lemming. So I need this lemming to eat the powder keg. That's how that's how the room is going to be solved. This I can kill with my sword. I'm well, I'm pretty sure I've never actually done that. Okay, no problem. Yeah, they are they are vulnerable to the sword, of course. So I need to use this lemming, and then I can kill it whenever at the end. This trap door setup I feel like is just a really nice thing that the developer did to give me time to experiment with this little chamber to see how it works before having to worry about the time pressure. I think that's what that is, and if that's the case, that's really good room design on the part of the develop of the uh, the architect. So I appreciate that. Uh, let's see, so this is a crack door, but uh, we can only hit it once because it's it's a crack door. So I guess uh, things to check here. Do you drop trapdoors? You do not. Okay. So I guess what we want to do then is we want you to hit the orb. You to hit the orb and then I push this. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, let's separate a little bit more than that. Yeah, way more than that. Because I need you to hit this while I... Well, hold on. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, I can hit it myself and get out, but I can't... I can't cross the trapdoor. Okay, so this is just a... a pretty demanding timing, I guess? Yeah, because if I do diagonal, you're not going to move. Uh, I guess I use the fact that you don't slide diagonally. Probably, let's... Okay, that did it. Oh. Darn it. Well... You will, you will eat it. If I, oh, why, why did I do that? Like I was wanting to show something, but I could have just stabbed it. Would have been fine. Uh, did I still need it for this part? I think I might have. I might have. Well, I can. Yeah, because I can jump that in the way, but. Alright, this isn't too bad, so once I see the sequence, I can just do this over and over. So I can't get it out, I need you. This is less efficient somehow. Ah. Everything is going wrong. Room clear. Surprisingly complicated room, given how few elements there were. Let's peek at this, just because I wanted to see if there's any path there. There is not. Yes, yeah, so this is a this is a return path, a one-way return path, presumably from some secret out in the ocean. Uh, that looks like a challenge scroll. Go to Golem. Uh, shallow water? I don't actually know. Let's check this. Yep, they can cross shallow water. Okay. Uh, it would have been my guess, because I think they're based off of the citizen script uh, as their base, and citizens can go through shallow water. I think. Most humanoids can. I don't think I've ever actually seen a room with citizens and shallow water in it, now that I think about it. Citizens are not the most popular element in the game. Alright, nothing can step here. Stepping here is bad. Uh, there is no way to fix it if we do that. Okay. This needs to be hit. The only way that's going to be hit is, well, okay, there's two ways. We can release the lemming or we can create a stepping stone. Uh, lemming seems plausible given that that's already lined up. What do these do? Okay, you open this, you close this. So, yeah, ideally we want you to hit this first or to have a huge delay between the two so that we can get out. Uh, this eye is not really doing anything, we just have to stab it, so this just guarantees that we enter this chamber at some point. 
Because that, that is one thing that lemmings will not eat, is other monsters. Okay. This worries me. But I shouldn't let it worry me until we've actually solved the room. Okay, well that opens everything. At which point... Yeah, the roach eventually gets out. I think that's fine. So I need to... Let's see, if I have the golem here... I think I can set up. That'll solve this, right? I really don't- I don't see what the issue with this- this pressure plate is. Yeah, we do something like this. There we go, you're in position. And now, when I do this... You step on that. Oh, I see an issue. When you let me out... Oh, also you... You're a turning one, I didn't notice that. Um, that's also kind of a fun thing about them. Their turning is technically a different monster. I wonder if it was the, always the last one or if it just became the last one and it was replaced with a turning lemming. That might become relevant later, we'll have to check. Alright, so the thing that I overlooked was that these lemmings are going to get stuck somewhere where I can't easily kill them. Uh, well, only this one will. And I guess I used the rock golem to fix that problem. And you... Yeah, you're, you're easily killable because you run around. Okay, never mind. So the only the only trick here now is dealing with this rock giant in such a way that I can gain access to everything. Uh Well, it's still not great, is it? Because I can get the rock giant. I can get the rock giant in one of these three spaces really easily, but I can't stab it from that position. Hmm. I wonder. If I can, I can get an extra turn. It's like if I'm here. And I have the rock giant, uh, the rock golem here. And I can step north and have it stay there if this is timed up right. Gives me one turn. Step here. Step here. I'm gonna be a turn short. I think I'm going to be a turn short, even if I use the, the bent tail lemming here. Okay, before I spend too much more time worrying about this, uh, another thing I could do is I could, I could position you here. Can I? I think using the shallow water, I think I can set that up. If I do that, then you... Oh, I see, that's what this is for. You would step on this and let me out, but then this would... Okay, mystery solved. This would lock me in. So I cannot... Uh, I cannot use that solution. Golem does not go here. Okay. Hmm.
yeah, so you're gonna go here. Are you ever gonna get back here? I mean, I'd have to, I'd have to force you here, wouldn't I? Yeah, you're just gonna kind of go around and do your own thing. stop you from getting there? Use the roach? Can I use the roach? In any meaningful way? And you're gonna be released, which is fine. you. See, the problem is... Okay, I think I actually want you here. Let's see, if I had, if I had you here, with you... Uh, this one I can kind of set wherever I want. I guess I haven't really shown that yet, but these are actually pretty easy to manipulate into position. As long as you have time and you're not trying to manipulate other monsters. Right, the bent tail lemming, if I had it coming this way... Alright, see, so yeah, I step here to kill this, it moves here. Ah, uh, so actually, it's, it's slower, isn't it? Yep, yeah, so I wait for it to be here. And I stab this, golem doesn't move. It keeps... No, it would rotate in that position. Huh. Which is fine. I can back up, keep it from rotating. I can set it off to go this way again. But all I'm going to get by doing this is it can be here. It'll move here. When I move here. doing that because the problem is I just I need you here well okay let's let's go backward then because this isn't gonna help me how do I ever get the golem into one of these three positions it's gonna have to be in here Roach doesn't go in shallow water, by the way. That's something that might come into play here. The problem is, you're only, let's, let's say, well, you're coming, if you're coming this way towards me, and I, I'm, I'm here, and you're coming this way towards me, if I step up, diagonally, you are going to try to immediately move diagonally. So maybe I'm here, I step this way, you are here. This spot has to be blocked. Okay, I think I see how this could work. Uh, what's your relative turn order? Uh, right. Lemmings move at the end, that was, I was told. So if I have... Let's see if I... So I step here.
I step here, I have a lemming here. Is that going to work? Yeah, I can send it up here and then it'll come down that way. So I can, I can send this lemming to here, get it into that position from with a long delay. So I step here, the turn that this steps here, on that turn, on that turn I need you You don't move before the golem. Never mind, this isn't gonna work. I was gonna have. I was gonna have it in this position, so I rotate my sword. The roach steps into the square my sword used to be occupying, so the golem stays put. And then I step up and swipe the roach, and that way I'd have my sword facing the right way to deal with the golem. It's not gonna work because the golem moves before the roach. Okay, well, what if I do this in the reversed order? I have, so I step here, and I have, do I need the roach for this? I guess what I can do with, okay, I should, I should, I should follow through this line of thought before I start thinking about what else I can do with the roach, but I did just think of something clever. Actually, okay, I did need to confirm something. Lemmings do not care if you are visible or not. They will still, uh, they will still move. That's very useful. Yeah, because they don't, they don't pay any attention to Beethor at all. They just kind of go where they're going to go. Aside from the the Fugundo and Munich uh, lemmings. Okay, so with that in mind, then. Could wait for you to get closer, uh, get get back into a better position, but so right, so my idea now is I step. So I'm still looking at something like this. Or is it like something like this, I guess? But I don't want you to move from that position. So then I do that. For the turn I do that, I need... That's where the lemming comes in. I need the lemming to be here. That keeps you in place. And if I do that... Okay, I don't think I need the roach. Uh, if I step here, my sword will be facing this way. If the lemming is going north, will it be going north in that position? No, it'll probably be going south. It's not ideal. So that means I step here. Lemming is here, so you don't move. This lemming then moves south. I can rotate my sword to keep you in place. You're going to go around like this at that point, and then you're going to come down here. Okay, so now I'm looking at where I can I can position the roach along here. That's going to make an interesting difference. OK. 
can I? You're gonna go up, you're gonna go up this way. Then you're gonna come down. So I, I can have, I can't have the roach here. I could have the roach here. It's not gonna matter, because then you're just gonna go off this way, this way, this way, and then through like that. So you've stepped down, I rotate. Now you don't get to move, so I rotate my sword, you're, you're in position, but now you're going to go around this way. If I rotate my sword again... You're just going to step. And the only way you're not going to step... Okay, well maybe this isn't the spot. Maybe if I slide this over a little bit, it'll be better. I can do this in any of these. Now that spot's nice because I can set the lemming up, but here I can set the, the lemming up relatively easy. In fact, it's easier to set up. Coming down here means that if I... If I time this such that Golem is here, you will come back down that way, which will block it again. Okay, so this is the solution, is this loop here. This loop here is the solution. Do I need the roach still? See, if I do the same thing, like, from here, where I step here, but the lemming is coming down this way, I then, so, I do that on the turn that the lemming is here, Golem will not move, lemming will move. Rotate my sword, this is fine. The problem is... Problem is, I still can't rotate my sword again. But yeah, the lemming, the lemming will come around me, and then it will come through here again. But my sword is in the way, and if I remove my sword, the golem's going to move before before the lemming. And having the roach, if the roach is faster than the golem, this would be so much easier. Yeah, because I'd, I'd have the room solved already if the roach was fast, faster than the golem. Okay, um... How can I make this roach useful? What could I be doing with it? In order for the roach to block the golem, it has to already be in position. Which is the same as this. So what that means is, because the golem moves first, I can never be in a position where my sword is holding the golem at bay, and I rotate my sword to stop holding the golem in place. And then get the the monster to do it instead. That's never going to happen. Because the golem moves first. So I have to be able to do this without blocking without transitioning from blocking the golem with my sword to blocking it with an, with a monster. I can block it with a monster first. In fact, that's what I'm doing to get into this position, which again, the golem is here at this point. If 
Okay. What if we reversed this? I have the golem over here somewhere. I mean, I guess I used the lemming to, to trap the golem, and then I get into some shallow water or something. Wonder. I wonder if I can get around this golem. Hypothetically, if I was coming back, it still has to be one of those three spots. I don't think it would make a difference. Because this, this terrain, I'm still stepping diagonally up. Now I can use the roach as an obstacle in this area because it can't cross the water and then the golem could get stuck on it. Okay, let's assume we were further down. I'm here. Golem is here. Lemming is here. I step. Golem is stuck. Lemming moves. I step. Golem moves. Two, you're already here. Now, oh, this is what an eight brain hold is, huh? Simple problem. Can I kill can I kill this lemming before before it even gets here? I've already determined that the golem cannot be what steps here. There's nothing I can get in this w in the way uh, of the lemming, so the lemming will be stepping here when this opens. Uh, I don't have access to any lemmings, so I can't activate this with a lemming until I've hit this. It's got to be this roach. There has to be something I can do with this roach. So how, how would the roach make a difference here? Because if the roach... If the roach is in my... line of sight, it's just going to end up here, which is going to kill me. Uh, hold on. It was here, and I was here, and the golem was here. And you... were here. No, that's... that's terrible. Like, if you were here and never moved, then yes, that would work. That would... that would be a setup that would work. But you're only going to be there for a single turn. So when you, and and when you're here, I can't move here. Because then you'll kill me. 
Like again, this almost works. If I had the roach here and I stepped this way and you blocked the roach for one turn, well, I can't kill it from here because I would be facing that way. I'd be facing the wrong way anyway. Okay, well, something obvious that I haven't considered is I can kill this. And in fact, killing this in advance, I guess means I'm killing it somewhere in this row. You will, so let's see, I'll hit this. I'll hit this orb. You'll all be released. You come down and hit that first to let me out. And you're going to be stuck for forever. So I have a two wide obstacle somewhere in here. You come down, come across, go up, come across. Here, and then you're just gonna be in a. a loop like this. Hmm. Wait, no, I can use this roach to redirect you across this way. Wait, so I didn't have to do anything this whole time. Like, I can... Okay, well, not, not there. But... I can just kill you. And then this room solves itself, right? So yeah, you get stuck. You're gonna go around. And then you're gonna hit this. Yeah, you're gonna eat that, that's fine. We can move over here. And now you're gonna let me out. Okay. Uh, that was not the challenge. Uh, oh dear, it's a Blork's challenge. Okay. Let the lemming at 14.15? At uh, 14.5, rather. Do all its possible route. Okay, so the thing that I was trying to do here is the challenge solution. You have to let this lemming get to here. Oh dear. Well, the room ended up being really simple. So how... How can I do this? So I can't... The only way that's going to be possible is to have a living golem on one of these three tiles at some point so that I can stab it there. Uh, I could stab it in advance, but I? No, because if I stab it in, in advance, you hit that, you hit that. And then I'm stuck in here, right? Let's just... Let's just make absolutely, absolutely certain that this plays out the way I think it does. Yes, I'm locked in here. Because of turn order, I cannot get out. Okay. So what else can I do? Because I'm hitting these, there's nowhere I can meaningfully stash you. And in any event, I want you to hit this. That's the only possible way. I should be careful about saying things like that. The only possible way that this room can be solved. It is like this. I need you in this position so that you hit this first. That way, when you hit this, I can get out. This eye does absolutely nothing. Its purpose... Right? Yes. Its purpose 
is to force me to come in here, which I have to do anyway, so I don't know why this eye exists. As far as I can tell, this eye is pointless. So I have to, I have to kill it before I leave this chamber. I can't wake it up. I have to go into this chamber to hit the orb anyway. Um. Do I get the golem in here before I hit the orb? That doesn't seem like it would help me in any any possible way. Like, I don't. I don't care. Okay, I don't. I don't. I don't understand why this eye exists. As far as I can tell, it has. It is completely irrelevant to the room. So I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to run with that assumption. So I hit this. Doesn't matter whether I destroy that or not. Though it does give me access to a checkpoint, which I guess only really matters if I do something here. But at this point, I can control how high you go on this. I don't think it matters. Not meaningfully, because I can always just run around to the other side. Like turn turn count wise it matters, but I can run around to the other side to move you up and down if I if I need to later. And in order to get the challenge, I need you to go here. It means I need the golem to deal with this. Okay, what can I do with this? What can I do with this roach? I can stash the roach here, and then that's not going to matter because this is all shallow water. I'd have to be stepping over here to get the roach out. Hmm. And again, I don't see how that roach helps me. Puts us in this position again. Now I could stash you well, over here, I guess. Uh, I can't keep the roach alive if I'm going to do that. But even so, I, I don't know how much this really helps me because In here. Step here. There we go. Okay, I think I see it. If I step from here to here, my sword will be facing this way. A lemming will hit my sword and start rotating. That means it'll stay in place for a few turns, which gives me a chance to rotate and then move and stab it, keeping the golem here. Okay. So in this in this position, I need to be here and here with you coming along this row like this. Specifically, timing wise, you have to be here. Ah uh, here. No, this is this still isn't going to work because I need to be able to step like this without you moving. Because if I was in this position with you there, you would step off. You are slower than the roach, so I could maybe have the roach go first and then the lemming after. I could line that up. And so then... Yeah, 
Yeah, because then if I had Golem, Roach, Lemming, Lemming is facing to the left. I step here. Up here. No, because then this starts turning. So I would need it to be further. So what I want is I want to step here and then I want to have you here, Roach. Okay. So if in this position you are here somehow with the lemming here, that's that's never gonna happen. Uh, unless... I mean, you're just barely in range. So if I was here, I could step here to get you to move here. And if the, the, lem if the roach happened to be in the right spot... Oh, I, I could step here. Oh, okay, I could step here to get you to move here. Step again. Lemming is stuck. Okay, so I don't think I need the roach then if I'm if I'm seeing that right. So now the trick is how do I get the golem here and stuck? And I think the answer to that. Let's see, lemming is here, I'm here. One, rotate, two, rotate, step, lemming steps. Step again. Lemming goes along this path. Problem is... I need the lemming out this way. Because I have to stay in the shallow water, which means I don't get a sword to manipulate the lemming with. Okay, well, if I was here and there was a roach here, no, I'd have to be here. I have to be here again. So I need I need to have already blocked you. Okay, well, I feel like I feel like I'm close to something here, but it's gonna require a little bit more, a little bit more time. So I guess I'll continue with this challenge. Uh, in the next part. At least the room itself is really easy to solve at this point if I want to. So we'll continue thinking about this in the next part. I will see you then.